Okay. So we ended the last video by saying that our role as paleontologists is going to be to figure out where exactly does our new fossil belong in the museum. So one of the ways that scientists use to categorize organisms is they can organize them by different species. So a species is a group of organisms of the same kind in one or more populations that do not reproduce with organisms from another group. So off to the side here, you can see these are examples of individual different species right here. So what scientists do is they go ahead and look at some different animals. And here's a kind of an example of three different types of animals. Um, a couple animals are animals from the past, and then a camel, most of you um, might be familiar with, are an animal that is actually currently living on our planet. So what scientists do is they not only start to take a look at these animals and start to make some specific observations. For example, we might notice that all animals are walking on four legs, but they start to look at some of the patterns in their behavior as well to start to see if there's some other ways that they can group animals. So in a second here, you're going to take a look at some different uh, species and you're gonna think about how could we sort these or group those species um, together in some different ways. So as you're doing that, not only do I want you to think about some of the physical characteristics like the legs that I just talked about, but take time to kind of read through each of the cards. You're gonna notice if you take a look at these three cards right here, um, that the camel and the titillantifus, which is a tricky word to say, um, both are plant-eating animals, um, where, whereas the pacatius is an animal that is a hunting animal. So we may categorize these two animals in a category of plant eaters, and this uh, species in a category of an animal that hunts and eats other animals. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to click through these slides. You can scroll throughout the video and take time to read a little bit about each organism. You can take a look at some of the bone structure of each of these different species and start to think about what are some things that maybe you see that are either similar um, about their structures or what are some things that you read that are similar traits that they might have. And as you go through, you're gonna notice that there are sometimes um, a soccer ball or an apple, and you might wonder what exactly those are for. Well, those are for you to kind of have a sense of how big this animal was. So that might be another way that you might categorize the animals is in terms of size. Any type of categorization is going to be okay. Anything that you see, just like when we were looking at these camels um, and saying that they all have four legs, okay? These animals as well, you're gonna wanna go through and think about what are the similarities that you can see to start to group those. So I'm gonna go ahead and click through the different species so that you can see each of these different species cards and then scroll back and forth and take your time to scroll through the video, pause, do a little bit of reading, make some observations. You might want to jot down some of your different groups. And when we're done, we'll go back and go over what were some possibilities that maybe you came up with.
Okay, so those were nine different species that you may have sorted in a few different ways. So I'm just going to give you a couple ideas that I came up with for ways that you may have sorted them. Um, you may have sorted them based on some different features and that's totally okay. These are just a couple ideas that I had. Um, so you could have sorted them into two categories based on where they live. So these are the organisms from those um, different slides that live in water. And these are all the organisms that live on land. So maybe that was one way that you chose to sort them. Another way that you could have chosen to sort them is based on how they move. And if you're doing that, you may have sorted them based on organisms that fly, organisms that swim, and then also some organisms that walk. And if you also notice, we might say that these all walk on four legs because we know some animals um, walk on two legs like humans. So as we go back to our thinking from the beginning of class, we now have a letter that's going to relate to the fossil that we looked at at the beginning of this unit. So this, this uh, email says, we want to make sure that the mystery fossil in the museum with a group of other species, that it makes the most sense for our fossil to be with. So that was kind of that question we posed at the beginning of this lesson. And we said, that's what we're gonna be looking at throughout this entire unit. So to make this decision, you're gonna to need to work by making careful observations and spending time comparing the bones of the mystery fossil to bones and body structures of other organisms, which we just started to practice. So in this email, they're asking that our intern paleontologist, which is you at the museum, quickly examine the mystery fossil bones and give us some initial ideas about what species in the museum the mystery fossil might be similar to. Their first examination of the mystery fossil tells us that there are three main types of organisms that the mystery fossil could be grouped with. So we've narrowed it down to three specific um, organisms, and that is either the whales, a wolf, or a crocodile. So these are going to be sort of the three claims or the three ideas that we start to work through as paleontologists in this unit. As a reminder, here's our fossil over here. And so just like that email just told us, our options are either going to be that our mystery fossil belongs in an exhibit with whales. Claim number two says that the mystery fossil is gonna belong in an exhibit with the wolves. And then claim three says that our mystery fossil is going to be in um, an exhibit with crocodiles, with um, the reptiles in the museum. So those are the three claims that we're going to be looking at and trying to decide which one do we as paleontologists um, want to argue is most closely related to this mystery fossil we found.